Esprit de Cor. Corpse. Cor. Yes, what's up you guys? It's Paul again with another miserable video about my past experience at St. Catherine's Military School. Well, I don't know why, but I, I keep ties with this place, even though it was my hell for four years. And uh, whether I'm weird because of the school or just the way I was born, that's up for interpretation or debate. But I do know the school was miserable. But it's interesting seeing how it's evolved because these buildings that they were in didn't change much. And you, you get the opening cover here of this thing I got in the mail. Usually they're asking for money before it's over. And these kids look way too happy because I was miserable going there. Now, the emblem there is exactly what it was when I went there. And that is a cool emblem. And, uh, and yeah, see, there's an old 41-year-old yearbook from when I was in fifth grade. And, yeah, we had that symbol. And it was in green on different clothing and whatnot. There's the old church and uh, like that. And uh, but let's see what's going on with these kids. They sure look too happy. Now these shirts, we had um, more of a tan colored shirt. And they seemed like this. Yeah, that kid knows what's how miserable this school is. Yeah, that guy looks like he's, yeah, that's. That's more the face of that I remember, see? You see this kid smiling? This is more the face I remember. Misery. Misery, even for the picture. The eighth grade graduating class. That guy looks like he's taking a dump. Misery. Oh, there's Robin Soterio. What's up, Robin? He is a big wig in the Lakers organization, and I have no idea what his job is, but it's mysterious. But um, he was always happy there. I guess because it's all boys, right, Robin? <laughs> anyway, that was the principal back then, and she was attractive. Um, I won't lie to you about that, and she was a good guitar player. Now let's open it up. For a while there, I thought that this lady here was this lady here, but much older. And you can't blame me for thinking so, because look, Sister Janellen Turner, and then Sister Jonelle. So I really thought we had an older version of Sister Janelle there, but from what I hear, it's not the case. Now there's another two boys looking way too happy. Now these hats, we had, they were not dark like that. And we had the just, oh, there's Robin Soterio. Looking good there, Robin. See, we kind of had the, the tan shirts. And we had the bow ties. The hat's uh, not shown in this picture. Um, these cords were something you could win, but the green and white when I went there was only for band. And these hats were tan when I went there and did, did not have the emblem. I got to say, I like the hat. I got to like the hat. And these buildings, I'm telling you, man, they were there when I was there. Now, it looks like they have a new principal, and she's a woman. And I'll tell you, she's not bad looking either. I can tell you, this school was all boys. So when you saw any woman, hell, even the nuns, I sometimes got horny for, depending on who they were. So that's a big deal that you have, like, a civilian woman on campus. I'd get my little erection going on. Look, this shows a guy that went to school there in 1946. And there he is. Yeah, and look, his, his uniform and hat in the pictures is not too different from uh, graduating classes of, uh, you know. Whoops. Anyway. Yeah, so that... And this guy went there in 46, and he claims that... Uh, it was his cornerstone for life. He learned morals, values, and stayed with him his entire life. Well, one thing's for sure. Thing, everything that happened to me at this school did stay with me for an entire life. 
Look, it says, educating young men for lifelong success since 1889. Do I look like a face of success? More like the face of misery and resentment. <laughs> oh, yeah, here you go. The big bass drum. I've seen them pull, like, fat Mexican guys that, you know, were shipped here from Mexico out of the ranks just to be the bass drum guy. It was kind of a tedious job. And they would just grab some guy and say, you look like a, a sturdy young man who can carry this. And he'd have to just bang this thing all year long. So that kind of sucks. I don't remember guitar when I went there, but that would have been cool. I'm kind of jealous that this kid already is probably better at guitar than I am. Uh, this dress, yeah, this dress uniform jacket, just like we had it. It looks like a kid doing the church thing. Aha! This shot's amazing to me because this school has not changed in, you know, 80 years. They called this area the white top and this area the black top. And there was a definite area where they connected. And here is a locker room and here's the barber shop right here. The gym is here. Look, they always have some marine, um, real marine or uh, military guys that are retired that work there. And these guys seem nicer. These guys seem cooler. To be honest, what I'm seeing with the school now looks pretty positive. It was miserable when I went there. But check it out. Um, this area here, where there's the white top meets the black top, I have a picture of me standing exactly, almost exactly right here. That is me. Yeah, I was pretty sexy, but I was little. And look, that's where the white top meets the black top. And that's me standing there. And uh, this door here is this door here. And this door here to the barbershop is this door here. So I do find it fascinating to see this spot right here where I was pretty much standing right here. And this is with my class at athletics class. Um, I think that's uh, Andros Martin waiting, and Andros Martin waiting right there, and the other guys were not in contact anymore. So that, I like that picture. The, this poor kid, you know he's having a rough time there. So again, they got a pretty girl lady in the class. I'll take that. So these extra citation cords, these ones we had, but these extra cords are kind of cool. You, you wanted to win those. And again, some of the clothing here, we didn't always have. This staircase goes right up to the third grade classroom. At least it was our third grade classroom in the library. It was then there then, and it's there now. Yeah, man. Let's go back. My class, that was me looking pretty good. You could tell my hair was starting to get kind of fucked up. And I had the big ears. And uh, look how small I was. See my class? That's me. Even Joe Zamudio, a good friend I'm in touch with now, um, towered over me. And these guys are not standing on chairs, guys. Not that I know of. I'm just as small as hell. Maybe they're standing on chairs. I don't know. I don't think... Well, no, they're sitting up on something. But I was small as hell, and that was me right there. I was a good-looking guy. Um, friend Ronnie Hall. Man, <laughs> there's Ron. Me and Ron Hall were close to best friends at this time, but we met up for lunch. Me, him, and another guy uh, um, a few months ago. And I saw him. I walked right up to him. And the first thing he said to me was, Is anyone else coming? I was like, Thanks a lot, Ron. Good to see you too, buddy. Now, I guess he's just... He's just a different personality than me. I'm sure he was happy to see me, but... I don't know. I, I thought after 41 years and all that hell me and him went through together, he could have mustered up a hug. <laughs> I gave him a hug goodbye and said I loved him when we left, and he looked pretty uncomfortable, but I did that on purpose. I thought that would be funny. Anyway, I'm still in touch with Matthew Burns on Facebook. 
Ron Hall, as I just mentioned. Wish we could find James Jones. Sergio Madrigal, he still looks great. Andras Martin, um, a class act. Martone, sorry. Andras Martone. Oh, and you know what, Andras? It's got the O here in your name, so I apologize. It is Martone. Hey, look, I'm right next to you, Andras. There's two people that were close to each other in height and in a picture, but very far off. He's such a winner, and I'm such a loser, but he's still very kind to me. Rowan Morocco. Um, I unfortunately picked on Rowan around this time for no fair reason. I was picked on by my brother and other people, and I carried it on to him, and there was no reason. Years later, he became like in charge of our tank divisions of the U.S. Army, and he and worked in the Pentagon, and he could have totally rolled me. And I was drunk and called him at 5 in the morning once and just made a real ass of myself. And I think that's the best revenge Rowan got on me, just seeing that I became a real drunk loser. <laughs> There's uh, Brock Ognebeni, and Brock lived near me part-time in Mission Viejo. Of course, we both lived at the school, but his one of his parents lived in the town I was from, and that really gave us a bond. And he had the Millennium Falcon toy. Brock was just a great guy, and he was there, you know, to have somebody just even connected to your hometown when you were so far away at a miserable school. He was a good friend, and that meant a lot to me. William Roberts, we often were told we looked alike, and um, he's on Facebook. We're friends. Um, Ishmael Thomas. I told you all before, man, he approached me in third grade when I was crying watching my parents walk away, and he was my first African-American friend and changed my life as far as being open-minded to all colors and, you know, ethnicities. We're still uh, close friends, I would say. Hoy Vanderpool. Um, I wouldn't say we were the best friends then, but anyone who went to this hell with me is a friend to this day. And he's very successful now, drives monster trucks and, and, and travels well. Sonny Worthington in the house. He's been doing great in Colorado with construction. And he, even though I thought of myself as the class clown, he was very popular and he was funny. And he also could do a lot of athletic tricks that really amazed us. And Joe Zamudio, he actually came to my work several years ago and said hi, and that meant a hell of a lot to me. Um, thought about this guy for years, how he was doing, and it was a great thing to see that he was doing well. So yeah, man, this school really was miserable. Um, yeah, that's me uh, at athletics. Me and my uh, skinny legs. Um... Boy, when it came to athletics, you could count on certain things. And Ishmael Thomas, even though he hadn't gotten... I bet he got taller later in life. He was such a premier athlete. He was always on the team. And often Sergio Madrigal right there, who's actually in great shape to this day. He was a powerhouse back then. Now he's kind of a little bit on the lean and fit side um, and strong as hell. Sergio has aged very well. And he remembers everything, which means a lot to me, because a certain someone I had lunch with didn't remember jack shit. And, uh, yeah, same thing on the football. You could count on uh, Ishmael Thomas. He was just always a premier athlete. And uh, one last thing. This was a miserable school, but the yearbook people who put these together had a sense of humor, and they would take these pictures that were throwaways from the year and kind of put a candid caption on them. <laughs> this particular person who did these this year was pretty funny. Like, look at this. You got some kids in formation who kind of have some big bellies, but it's not something you think in current times they would comment on it. But what did this person write? Now that was a lunch. <laughs> yeah, the person who did these captions... That was a little bit of offensive, don't you think? Now that was a lunch. <laughs> now we have Sonny Worthington from my class, Andros, Andros Martone, and Sergio Madrigal again in a caption. And you got, okay guys, one, two, three, hit it. So that was, that was kind of funny. This guy here with the gun is like, honest, I didn't know it was loaded. It's pretty funny. Oh, and there's Tommy Cruss. 
He played guitar in front of a whole school with his band and played Whip It and Van Halen and Blew Us Away. And we're friends on Facebook. And, and uh, I, I'm not going to play unless I get a gun, too. I think that's you, Tommy Cross. And, uh... There's Matthew Burns. We're friends. What do you mean, play it again, Sam? That's pretty funny. Yeah, that lunch. That food there was terrible. And look, plop, plop, fizz, fizz. <laughs> So that, that was pretty funny. Yeah, man, it was serious business. Um, back then, we did a lot of things with a rifle. It didn't shoot, obviously, but it was, a, you know, had weight to it. And it's one of the very few things that made the school cool. You looked forward to getting old enough to run around and with the rifle. Well, of course, it's all woke now, and there is no more rifles at St. Catherine's Military School even though the rifles were fake. There was also a real rifle range, but they took that away. That's understandable, almost kind of, maybe, maybe kind of, but taking away the fake guns, because the nuns thought that was inappropriate, really took the fun out of uh, whatever was fun was left. And here's three boys looking too happy again. Um, and I recognize this hallway. That's the hallway where the uh, classrooms were. And, uh-oh, I'm running out of film here. And then they show what happens with a kid who graduated recently.